Let's look at question five from our series of questions in the general physics examination revision. Question five here says, ball A is dropped from rest from a window. At the same instant, ball B is thrown downward and ball C is thrown upward from the same window. Which statement concerning the balls after their release is necessarily true if air resistance is neglected? A says, at some instant after it is thrown, the acceleration of ball C is zero. B says, all three balls strike the ground at the same time. C says, all three balls have the same velocity at any instant. D says, all three balls have the same acceleration at any instant. E says, all three balls reach the ground with the same velocity, all right? Now, how do you solve this question? To solve this question, I'd want to use a diagram to illustrate this, all right? Okay, so let's say we have a high-rise building here. We'll draw this one here. Let's take this as a high-rise building. Okay, then we have this. Here's my ground floor. I'll just do this to show ground floor. This one here. All right, and let's say I have a window here. Let's take this point as a window. All right. So from this window here, three balls are being let out. Let's look at the three balls there. The first one is ball A. Ball A is dropped from rest from the window. All right. So let's have ball A. So I'll just have this and have ball A. Okay. I'll call this A. Ball A is dropped this way. So it's coming downwards. Okay, next we said at the same instant, so all of this is happening at the same time. At that same time, or that same instant, ball B is thrown downward. Now, if I have two balls and one is just casually dropped, meanwhile, the second one is thrown downwards, which of them will arrive at the ground, ground level faster? Obviously, B will arrive at the ground level faster. Why? It was thrown. And hence, a greater force was needed. So if a greater force was needed for it to move downwards, that means B would go down faster. So what that simply means is that B will go down faster. Don't forget, it's they happen at the same instant. But B was shown with a greater force. So here, I will have B coming down like this. All right, so B would go down faster. To represent the second one there, I'll call the second one there, ball B. You want to observe that ball B was thrown downwards. Now, being thrown means that a greater force was used to push it downwards. In essence, ball B would come down faster than ball A because ball A was just being let down. Meanwhile, ball B was applied a force, right, to throw it down. So to go down faster, what happened to ball C? Let's see. And ball C is thrown upwards. From the same window. So ball C is going upward. So I have ball C like this. Uh, use this. Call this C. Ball C is thrown upward. So you have this. All right. So we have this diagram there. Ball A was just left down. Ball B was thrown downwards, giving it a bigger force. And hence, it will, it will arrive at the bottom or at the end. By end, I mean the bottom here. It will arrive at the bottom faster. And then ball C was thrown upwards. That's this way. It's going upwards. Okay. Now they're asking you which statement is true if air resistance is neglected. It says at some instant after it is thrown, the acceleration of the ball is zero. Now you want to note that if C is going upwards, we know that C goes upwards at some point. It stops moving and then starts falling downwards. Now at this point, let's call this P. At the point P where C stops moving, it is still being acted upon by gravity. If C stops moving at P, what happens is that is that its velocity, V, is equal to zero. That means at point P, the velocity of the ball C is equal to zero. Meanwhile, its acceleration is not zero. Why? Because even at this point, P, C is being acted upon by gravity. So it has an acceleration due to gravity. Although 
its velocity is zero and it stops moving. So in essence, its acceleration is not zero. That is not correct. So at some instant after it's thrown, the acceleration of ball C is zero. That's incorrect. It is its velocity that becomes zero and then it comes downward. B says all three balls strike the ground at the same time. That's not true. From this, you can see that B will strike the ground faster before A, and then finally C has to go up and then get zero velocity and then starts falling downwards. In essence, B should go down first or strike the ground first before A and then C. Because, of course, the reason will be that B was thrown downwards. So B was released with a greater force downwards as opposed to A, which was just let down. Okay, so that, that, that option is not correct. They can't hit the ground at the same time. So this is off. C says all three balls have the same velocity at any instant. Well, if you look at this question here, you want to observe that for this, they will all have the same acceleration. This is a question on free fall. And we've discussed free fall in our, pre in our, in our previous class. What we said free fall occurs when a body is undergoing a vertical motion like this. When a body undergoes a vertical motion, either upwards or downwards, it is undergoing a free fall motion. That means a motion under gravity. Now, for a motion under gravity, what is constant is gravity. So G is constant. That means they both have or they all have the same acceleration because they are all being acted upon by the acceleration due to gravity. They all fall with the acceleration due to gravity. Meanwhile, their velocities are not the same. B would most likely have the most velocity because it was released downward with a greater force. So it will have a bigger velocity as compared to A. If B and A were moving with the same velocity, then both B and A would land at the same time. That means they will reach the ground surface at the same time. The fact that they were released at the same time but did not reach the ground surface at the same time simply tells you that B is moving with a greater velocity than A. So in essence, they cannot have the same velocity. So that option is not true. Nope, it's not true. D says all three balls have the same acceleration at any instant. This looks correct. But let's look at E. E says all three balls reach the ground with the same velocity. Nope. They don't reach the ground with the same velocity. They reach the ground with the same acceleration. Why? They are undergoing free fall motion and their acceleration is equal to the acceleration due to gravity. So in essence, E is not correct. The correct option here is D. They have the same acceleration at any instant. Why? Because they are undergoing a free fall. That's a vertical motion. And hence, the acceleration would be acceleration due to gravity. So the correct option there is obviously D. So that's how we solve this question. Let me give you a task for you to try out. Now, here is something to try out, question six. It says a car travels along a highway with a velocity of 24.0 meter per second west. The car exits the highway and 4.0 seconds later, its instantaneous, its instantaneous velocity is 16.0 meter per second 45.0 degree north of west. What is the magnitude of the average acceleration of the car during the four second interval? So you have A, option A to E. All right, solve this question, leave your answer in the comment section, and I'll tell you if you're correct or not. All right, okay, guys. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, like this video, and also leave a comment. For the comments, I give you a task. What's the answer to the question? Solve it and leave your answer in the comment section. Don't forget to also subscribe. If it's your first time here or you're yet to subscribe, please do want to subscribe. Hit the bell icon and select all so that you get notified whenever we upload new content. Then finally, do want to share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in our next class.